TheVeganGal.com. This was this was supposed to be a uh, live discussion on the World Peace Diet by Will Tuttle, which is the Eco Vegan Gal Book Club book of the month and a half-ish. <laughs> it was the book for October and now it's November and time's just flying by. So it looks like it's going to be postponed because we had some technical difficulties and I want everything to go nice and smoothly. Plus I know a bunch of you are um, busy with the holidays and all so we're going to reschedule this. I'm wondering now if I should start doing books in two month blocks instead of one month blocks. Um, Sometimes a month isn't enough for you to get the book and to read it and, and find the time to schedule it in. I would love your feedback. For those of you who have no idea what I'm talking about and haven't heard about the book club yet, I uh, apologize. I, I still need to do some better promotion on it. It's something I started a few months ago because I realized that um, there's so many incredible books out there about the environment, about health and veganism. and I wish that I made more time for reading them. So I wanted to hold myself accountable in some way or another, and that's why I decided to do the book club, because not only will it be about me reading it, but it's about the whole community as a whole. Also, the, one of the benefits of having a book club, if you've ever been a member of one before, is that it gives you an opportunity to discuss it and think about things um, in maybe a different way than, than you had uh, if you were just reading it on your own without someone to chat with about it. And lastly, the third reason is it's an opportunity for people like Will Tuttle to join the discussion and answer questions. Um, one of the books that we read previously was a book by Beth Terriel about plastic-free living, and it was so cool to have her there to ask uh, questions about, you know, things that came up in our minds that maybe weren't answered in the book and um, just to kind of hear that live opinion about it. So I really hope that you'll join whenever this uh, book discussion is rescheduled. I will let you know on Facebook, Twitter, and Google+. And uh, I'll have a link down below. The best way for you to find any information about the book club is to join the club on Google+. And uh, that way you'll be notified about anything that's going on. And I'll also let you know when it's time to select the next book, which I'll do starting in December. And I'll probably let that one go um, until sometime in January. That way with the holidays and all of that you'll have an opportunity to get it and to read it and I don't really like to rush it too much. So um, the other thing I want to do is just to entice you to maybe get this book in the meantime. Not only can you get it on book but uh, in, in book form but you can also get it uh, as an audiobook and uh, I want to read you a few pieces from it. Uh, it's, it's really really incredible. One thing that I like to explore a lot with Eco Vegan Gal is all the different reasons why um, having an eco-friendly plant-based lifestyle is good for you and everyone around you. Uh, people go vegan, for example, for all different types of reasons, for health, for the environment, um, to protect the animals. But something that this book comes up, uh, or brings up, really the whole point of it, is, is so much more beyond that. It's the energetics involved in the, in the foods that we choose to eat. It's the, kind of the karma in there. And it seems like a very spiritual thing, and, and it really kind of is with this book. Um, but when you read this book, you realize that it's something really realistic. It's not just some crazy... Um, worldview. You know, when we think of the word peace, for example, um, world peace is something is like some huge lofty goal that we're never going to achieve. But what I took away from reading this book is that uh, world peace is something right within our grasp. It's something that all of us have the uh, ability to achieve, but really comes down to that collectiveness of it. Um, and on the other hand, although it's something that we need to do as a group, as a community, um, it's something that we can also do as individuals, and that's by changing our eating habits. A lot of people think, well, I'm just one person that can't make a difference. And that's really one of the biggest messages of Eco Vegan Gal is showing that you can make a huge difference with the smallest little changes in your life. It doesn't have to be intimidating, overwhelming, it can be something that you do step by step or it can be something that you switch overnight, but those changes can really impact you. They can impact your health, as is discussed in this book, um, enormous shifts that can take place 
uh, in the way that you look, in the way that you feel, um, in how long you live. Uh, of course, choosing a plant-based diet is, is great for the environment uh, for a number of reasons, as I'm constantly discussing through Eco Vegan Gal. And th the most obvious choice is about the animals, and that's probably the biggest thing that this book touches upon, is, you know, we're not killing animals, we're not harming animals. And by choosing to take care of animals, to respect animals and love them, and not take their lives just for the purpose of us enjoying their their flesh or their secretions is we're starting to give off a better energy a more positive energy and outlook in the world and um, I wanted to read you a few quotes on this um, first of all the the description of this book actually no you know I'm gonna skip it I'm gonna leave some of this stuff for it for the discussion but um, here we go here's a couple quotes um, we begin to realize that our shared cultural reality is profoundly affected by the attitudes, belief, and practices surrounding food. There are amazing unrecognized social, psychological, and spiritual con consequences to our meals that ripple through all aspects of our lives. Food is actually our most intimate and telling connection, both with the natural order and with our living cultural heritage. Through eating the plants and animals of the earth, we literally incorporate them. And it is also through the act of eating that we partake of our cultural values and paradigms at the most primal and unconscious levels. That's pretty deep there, and that's really something that's not discussed a lot. You know, I don't even really discuss it in those terms, and this book is starting to inspire me to really take a big look at it because over the years, as part of my transformation, as part of moving into that eco-vegan lifestyle that I've adapted, and keep in mind, I've been vegan for nine years, um, and eco-conscious for a while, but it's really the past four years, even more so the past two years, that I've really started to shift a lot in my head. And one thing that's come up, uh, along with all of these shifts is this kind of spirituality and more respect for life and, and this drive to become the best person that I can be. And I think that's why being eco-vegan has really stuck with me and made such a, an impact on, on my heart and my mind and my body. And uh, just thinking about that connection that we feel and the food and how that impacts us is really the whole point of this book. Let me read something else. <clears throat> Our deep urge to evolve to a more spiritual, mature level of understanding and living and to create a social order that promotes more justice, peace, freedom, health, sanity, prosperity, sustainability, and happiness absolutely requires us to stop viewing animals as food objects to be consumed and to shift to a plant-based way of eating. And there you have it. You know, it's it's that evolution that so many of us want to take to just a, a better place is right within our fingertips. Pull another one out here. To be free, we must practice freeing ourselves. To feel loved, we must practice loving others. To have true self-respect, we must respect others. The animals and other voiceless beings, the starving humans and future generations are pleading with us to see it's on our plate. That's a really big, deep one right there. And, uh, you know, we, we do, again, have that decision to make such a massive uh, impact within every choice, every meal, three times a day, if not more. Um, all right, I think I'm gonna... Here's a, well, here's a good one. At a deeper level, forcing young children to eat dairy products brings into their impressionable minds and bodies a most unfortunate and terrible vibrational energy of the profound sadness, grief, panic, suffering, and fear that mother cows always experience on dairies, organic or not. And uh, that's just a little tidbit. Um, I like that term vibrational energy and really thinking about are we, if we're eating animals, are we um, ingesting the energies that they feel when they're being harmed, tortured, in pain, and killed? And Will goes really in depth about what it's like to be an animal as, as much as he can um, and how that uh, impacts us emotionally. And when you think about it, he goes into this as well. 
the anger that a lot of people have when they're eating animal products versus the happiness that people have when they've adapted a plant-based diet. It, it really is a big energetic shift. Um, veganism is ultimately a choice to listen to the wisdom in our heart as it opens to understanding the interconnectedness and essential unity of all life. And one more here. Changing our individual daily food choices to reflect a consciousness of mercy will transforms our transform our lives and move our culture into a positive direction far more than any other change we can contemplate. So little tidbits from this book. If you haven't picked it up yet, please do. And hopefully you'll have a chance to at least start it before I reschedule the discussion. If not, uh, please just join and listen in. Maybe you'll be inspired as well. Uh, this could end up being a really profound book for you, especially as we move to the end of 2012, which is a really powerful year. You know, hopefully we'll all still be here after December 21st. I'm, I'm confident that we will be, but uh, moving into 2013, you know, it's going to be a huge energetic shift for the world. And uh, moving into a new year anytime is also a great opportunity for us to start shifting our thoughts and evolving and really thinking about how we want to do. So I think a book like this is a really amazing um, insight into um, the opportunity, you know, the possibilities and, and how we can become better people. So anyways, thanks for watching this. And again, I apologize if you were looking forward to the discussion, but it's going to be even better when we reschedule it. And um, if you have any questions, feel free to ask me right here in the comment section below. You can email me, you can fill out the form. That's usually the best way. And reach out to me on all the social media networks. You can find more, or more information as always at ecoveganegout.com. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and uh, subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Thanks so much. I look forward forward to all of you joining, reading the book, and cannot wait to hear what you think. And of course, just joining the Eco Vegan Gal book club in general. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you later.